Good day everyone and thanks for joining us today. Uh, well after the last video that we posted I've been uh, asked by quite a few people to explain a little more about what we use on the plants as they're growing in the form of fertiliser um, and how we use it and what the fertiliser does that we actually use. So we're going to have a crack at that today explaining that. So basically on potatoes we use a dynamic lifter which is pelleted chook poo. I think I mentioned that in the last video as you can see. Now the pelleted chook manure is different to the stuff that you get out of straight out of a chook pen. Uh, if you get it straight out of the chook pen it's got too much nitrogen in it and it will just um, burn your plants and completely stuff them. This stuff here has been composted down and turned into pellets. It's beautiful and mild, contains high nitrogen, it contains potassium and some potash. Now, we find with new potatoes in particular, that potash is a wonderful thing to put on. This is the stuff that we use, of course in a lot bigger bags for the commercial crop, sulphate of potash, right? So you can get two different sorts. You can get either sulphate of potash or muriate of potash. The difference between them is that the muriate of potash has a lot of chloride in it. Uh, and it can be good for plants, but we tend to only use the sulphate of potash here because uh, the chloride uh, is a salt and we figure that um, the less salt that goes onto your soil, the better it is uh, for the soil and for the worms and for the microbiology that's in your soil. So we always use sulphate of potash and we've used it with great results. Um, it's a fruit and flower booster, so it gives you bigger fruit, tastier fruit, and we found with potatoes, it's probably increased our crop by about a third since we've started putting sulphate of potash on. Now another little tip for you is that if you want great tasting homegrown tomatoes, and they are always great tasting of course, but if you want even better tasting homegrown tomatoes, um, put about a matchbox full of sulphate of potash around your tomato plant as it's growing. So if you're putting veggies in, go out to the garden store or wherever you get your supplies from and grab a bit of sulphate of potash. It will work wonders, I guarantee it. We've got half a bucket of dynamic lifter or pellet of chook poo in there. We're gonna mix some sulphate of potash in with it. With a bit of a mix up. That's beautiful. Bit of milk on that you'd have for breakfast. Put a bit more dynamic lifter in. A bit more sulphate of potash. You don't need to use a whole lot of it. But we put it on twice during the growing season. We put it on when we plant potatoes or vegetables and about when they start to flower. Uh, and we find that it does just a magic job. We'll spread that out before we put the potatoes in, give them a good bed of uh, dynamic lifter and potash to uh, start getting roots into, and they'll be up out of the ground in no time. There you go, that's how it's mixed up together. So probably the best way for me to explain how much we actually apply in uh, each furrow that we do is uh, to say that we put one handful on for every three steps that we take. Um, that's the easiest way to explain it. That is plenty in there for a start and then of course we do it a couple more times throughout the growing season. Um, we do use some blood and bone occasionally but I do prefer um, the pellet de chook manure. We don't use anything else. Um, we're very cognizant of uh, the soil being healthy and trying to improve the soil every year. Um, I think far too many people uh, just go for one crop out of it and it ruins the soil. They don't try to renovate it or get it back to being healthy and uh, that can be a big problem for everyone. So one thing that you need to remember uh, when we're talking about fertilizers is that root crops as a general rule don't need a lot of nitrogen. Put an all-purpose fertilizer on for a start when you plant such as pelleted uh, chook manure um, but after that don't put a whole lot of nitrogen on, particularly on potatoes because what you'll find is that uh, you'll get a lot of top growth and very little underneath if you put too much nitrogen on. 
uh, leafy greens of course like lettuce um, spinach etc Chinese greens they like a lot of nitrogen and corn of course which absolutely eats it um, and while we're talking about nitrogen uh, a little tip for you if you're growing broad beans or well, we call them broad beans here I think you might call them uh, in America and uh, overseas faba beans um, but if you're growing those or peas in a smaller uh, setting a good idea after you harvest them is to cut the plant off about an inch above the ground and then shove some corn uh, in there because uh, they make their own nitrogen the beans and the peas on the roots they have the nitrogen nodes that develop and if you put some corn in between your peas or in between your uh, bean plants after they're cut off the corn will absolutely thrive and you'll have a great crop from it because it's getting all of the natural nitrogen that it needs from the roots of the other plants so there you go that's what we do here there's a little explanation of the stuff that we put on our crops all natural all good certainly improves the soil and gives us a great crop.